Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Poetry News with Arsene, Squigs, Eddie, and there was no one else available. How's everyone doing today? Are you well? Doing great. How are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. Looking forward to some more Poetry News. Ah, let's do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Speaking of which, coming up on the show today, a poetry style you might not have heard of, poetry in the classroom, and the word virtual open mic. For regular viewers, there is no Shakespeare joke this week, but I'm sure you're not too upset about that. And we start with, and apologies for my pronunciation, the Thomas Shalliman Prize. This is run by the Massachusetts USA-based Factory Hollow Press and is named after an acclaimed Slovenian poet. The Thomas Shalliman Prize is looking for chapbooks of between 20 and 28 pages long from poets based anywhere in the world. Submissions are open until the 17th of March, 2022. And there are some interesting prizes on offer here. Not only will the winner receive $1,000, they'll also receive publication by Factory Hollow Press and the offer of a month's long writing residency in Ljubljana, which is Slovenia's excellent capital. I went there a few years ago. And they will also get their chapbook translated into Slovenian. Entries cost $17 and will be judged by Ilya Kaminsky. The full terms, conditions, and details are available at factoryholopress.com forward slash Thomas Shellerman Price. At this point, I'd like to ask Arsene, Eddie, and Squigs, uh, what do you think about this? Something that interests you? Interesting prices? Hey, prices, I I think I've probably, I'm afraid that I've probably been too outspoken about this before, but prizes are always, I think, a good thing to have because it helps not, first of all, as starving artists, we need the money, right? Like, <laughs> bottom line. But also, I think it's a great way to encourage people to continue to feed the arts and get into art and continue to do their own work and improve, right? It's a great motivation. So yeah, I'm all for this. I mean, the 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 prizes themselves and uh, like not only do you get pri prize, prize money and you get published, but also you get your work translated and you get the residency and the, the, the judge is Ilya Kaminsky and Ilya Kaminsky is one of my favorite poets. And the opportunity is great. And the entrance fee is, is very cheap with $17. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great opportunity. Like I was listening and I'm, I gasped. I, <laughs> I opened my mouth and I was like, this is amazing. This is a great opportunity for anyone to join and to, to participate. Just gather those poems uh, together and, and send that manuscript. It's, it's, it's a great opportunity that no one should miss. Totally agree with both of you. Um, you mentioned that you've been to Ljubljana a couple years ago, I was saying. Yeah. Have you read um, Bronica Decides to Die by Paolo Coelho? Coelho? No, but if it's written by Paolo Coelho, then, then, then I should. Yeah, it is also set there, you know, in uh, Ljubljana, which uh, I wouldn't dare you to spell properly. But yeah, uh, how was that place? Is it, it's, it's mentioned in the book. So I'm wondering if it's just as picturesque and, and uh, I guess, classic as... As it was, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. well, it's uh, Ljubljana. It's a city of literature, one of the UNESCO cities of literature. It's also, I believe, Europe's smallest capital. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic place. I'd recommend uh, anyone to go there. And um, if you win this poetry prize, then, then you can uh, uh, for a month. So, you know, I, 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 like a, I like a competition with interesting prizes, and uh, this is definitely one. So not only do we recommend you enter, but we also recommend that you read... Uh, what was the name of the book again, Squigs? Veronica Decides to Die. But, Absolutely. Um, so uh, check that out as well. And Death for Public by Ilya Kaminsky. Just putting this mm. out there. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. So thanks, everyone, for your thoughts on that. Um, got lots of reading to do. But um, <laughs> we'll be back right after this.
Welcome back, everyone. Uh, I'm Eddie, and I'm joining you from the beautiful city of Batoun in the north of Lebanon. If you are as excited as I am about poetry and you are a teacher, I have a workshop that will work perfectly uh, for you. The workshop I'm bringing you is uh, Poetry in the Classroom, a virtual workshop for educators by Project Voice. In this workshop, Sarah Kay and Phil Kay, two of the world's most famous and best Poets present a workshop uh, sharing strategies for teaching poetry in the classroom. Uh, with thoughtful uh, framing, poetry can provide students with a powerful doorway into self-awareness, community building, and creative expression. Uh, in this workshop, Sarah and Phil will draw on their years of experience to share best practices for bringing poetry into the classroom with a focus on accessible contemporary poetry from living writers, which I believe as a teacher who teaches literature and poetry in the classroom, this is very important for students to read uh, contemporary poetry. Participants will be guided through how to create effective and meaningful exercises and writing prompts uh, and will work hands-on in small groups and they will leave the workshop with a new collection of resources uh, that they can incorporate into their own Classrooms. The workshop will explore how to create a positive environment that supports risk-taking, trust-building, and respect, giving students the tools to not only enjoy poetry, which I find beautiful, and to, but to create their own powerful portraits of self. This workshop will take place on Saturday, October 30 at 6.30 p.m. GMT, and it's, it's around two and a half hours. Let's bring back our heralds and discuss this brilliant idea, in my, in my opinion. As a teacher, I believe that it is very important for students to read, not, not only to read poetry, but to read poetry that is contemporary by living poets, people whom they could relate to. What do you guys think of that? Uh, so I have a whole lot to say. Okay, so I apologize ahead of time. I always have a lot to say. What am I saying? Okay, anyway. but. <laughs> poetry for me, so I got to tell you my personal story of how I became an accidental poet. So when I was 16, I, one of the things I used to do a lot is I used to scribble in what well, we have these like black and white marbled composition notebooks, they're called. And I would just write down all my feelings in just like I thought I was writing down my feelings in like a journal manner. manner. And then, of course, I got in trouble with my teacher. And she said, you know what? You're actually a pretty good poet. And I didn't even know I was writing poetry other than, you know, I was used to seeing Shakespeare and Edgar Allan Poe, who is, he's my boy, so I can't, Edgar Allan Poe is my boy, so. Um, he's, <laughs> but like, those are the two that we really focused on. And having a workshop like this is so important because people can understand that it's more than quote the Raven and let me count the ways, right? It's, there's so much to, that, you, that can make you a poet. And having this workshop is so important to me because I feel like it, it allows especially teenagers to have a different outlet to be creative and, and and healthy i think it's healthy you know hey i just love the idea that sarah k and phil phil k because yeah i know you're doing a workshop i want to be there maybe i'll see you all did all you got viewers yeah i'm going there right <laughs> i know i mean listening to sarah k on youtube you know back in the day it was my introduction to spoken word and like how poetry can can be uh that powerful and you know, contemporary and relevant. Like you can do it. Like give me an open mic. You know, I got things to spit after watching. Like, oh, was if I, if I should have a daughter by Sarah Kay? You guys know one? Oh, oh, oh breaks my, my heart. So beautiful. Oh God, no, that's my two cents about that. Lovely. No, absolutely. And I, 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 I have to agree. If I can stop stammering, I have to agree. Um, it's. I think when, so my personal experience of being taught poetry, especially at school, was really negative. You know, well, I mean, I mean, my English teacher generally was a very, very poor teacher. And like certainly the best teachers I had weren't necessarily the ones that taught the subjects I was interested in. They were the ones that put their enthusiasm for the subject and communicated stuff to me in ways that were relevant to me, you know, and um you know, a great teacher can do that and a bad teacher can destroy your love for a topic that, that they're trying to teach you. And, you know, I think you're definitely in safe hands with, um, you're definitely in safe hands with the case. And, you know, it's, 
if you can bring someone into poetry and writing and ways of thinking that that's relevant to them and give and give people an outlet for things there are so many positive benefits for that and you you never know where the next great poet is going to come from that mm -hmm. might not come from if they're not taught by someone who who really knows how to teach it so i think this is fabulous i think this is brilliant it is and i do agree with you all it is such an such a great uh, workshop for all teachers uh, to to attend for anyone actually, but also teach, more importantly, obviously teachers because it is such an important thing to try to teach uh, poetry that is relevant, poetry that students could relate to. Uh, and like Martin said, this is something you, you don't know how your students uh, will react, or maybe the next greatest poet. Uh, will be in one of your students, at least I'm speaking from experience, and I try to have my students love poetry as much uh, as I do. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you guys. We will continue, we will come back after this break with Arsene and her second. Everybody, it is Arsen back again with you live from New Jersey. And today I have a TED Talk for you. And the TED Talk is really just one sentence, which is vulnerability is not a weakness, it is a strength. And I encourage all of you as creatives or people trying to become creatives to speak the word. And that you can do through this open mic open mic called Speak the Word, which is based in the UK. It is on the fourth Saturday of every month. And they also have every Saturday workshops and peer coaching. So this is a great way for you to come into yourself and really, really understand what poetry is about, which is bottom line expression at the end of the day. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter what form, Express yourself. So come to Speak the Word Open Mic. It's at 6 to 8 p.m. UK time. It is a completely free event. You just have to register on Eventbrite. And they also like to stress that they are LGBTQIA plus friendly. So you know that you are safe and accepting space. So come on through. And uh, yeah, let us bring on the heralds and see what they think. I think that's beautiful. And first off, I want to say, yes, um, like I came up with a formula, like a, like a syllogism. I don't know if we've done it. Yeah. Um, the reason why vulnerability is strength is because vulnerability is a practice of honesty and there's no greater strength than honesty. Sure. And that's my mathematical application to that. I think that's beautiful. And yeah, looking forward to check that out. I love, you know what I love doing about the show? Learning about new open mics. <laughs> and such. Exactly. Yes. Like and it is great to like since the since the pandemic started and we have been able to connect with the rest of the world and see all of these open mics from all around the world and you see people from all around the world i mean in a in a way this pandemic brought us all four of us here uh, mm -hmm. uh together so it is a great uh, opportunity for people to just feel comfortable in a universal space right from their homes and it is great like i would love to attend that uh, open mic and just see people from all around the world participating. Absolutely. Like it's really important to be able to be vulnerable. And I think I know um, in theory, you can go to pretty much any poetry night and be that. But I know sometimes, like, you know, like if I'm feeling particularly vulnerable, I have something particularly vulnerable to say, I'll, you know, if I'm thinking, oh, I'll go to that night and I'll say it, but then when it actually comes to the moment of doing it, something in me would go, no, I don't want to. Um, you know, there's something that would, would would hold me back from doing that. I can't really explain what that would be, but I think um, I think you and, and hopefully our viewers would know would know uh, what I'm getting at if you performed and you've been in that headspace. And so to have something that's specifically talking about 
this is a night for vulnerability that's immediately you know it's making it okay and even though it would be okay at another event to actually have that additional validation because again we often need that when we're vulnerable we need someone to tell us that that, that something's okay so yeah I, I think it's great and I, I look forward to checking it out as well it sounds fantastic me too yeah, so uh, sorry. go ahead Eddie. Mm -hmm. to add on that as someone who has organized and hosted uh, open mics for a few years now i always stress and i always open uh, the event or the night with the idea that this is a safe space this is a place for you to feel vulnerable because these spaces are much needed in this time and uh, in this place and time in this world uh, in this world uh, in which we live yeah i definitely agree like i was telling you guys in a previous segment i'm i'm super emotionally heart-based so to have spaces like this where i can speak my heart and people are not like are you okay that, it's great for me it's great for me and i and as as a person who is actually a i guess you could say i'm a pandemic poet although i've been reading i've been writing for much longer but i came out public during the pandemic I love spaces like this because I feel like it gives you a different bond that you don't even get in person because in person you're like, oh, what is, is this person judging me? Is this person, oh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to see this person again. But in a virtual space, you're sharing the same platform and you're sharing the same ideas and it's it's great, I love it. So definitely come on out for that. And uh, yeah, moving on to my buddy Squigs over there after this break. Thanks everybody. Good morning, good day, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I am Squigs reporting for the Poetry News, broadcasting from here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And today I'd like to draw our attention to an article in the Philippines from the philstarglobal.com, um, an article written by the author Danton Ramoto titled Poetry for Starters, in which he speaks of his experiences in his education of poetry here in the wake of his forthcoming book of the same title, Poetry for Starters. Um, in this article, he goes on to speak that short poems were a specialty of the pre-colonial Filipinos, and at the heart of these poems was the taling haga, or metaphor. The two things being compared are different from each other. The pleasure in the text is, re is a realization that there is a link between the two things being compared. This realization then leads to some form of enlightenment. The Hanu Nuo Mangyans also wrote the Ambahan, which is composed of seven syllable metric lines. The poem can run to more than four lines, and it's usually chanted. Uh, like many forms of oral literature, it is owned by no one but the community. The Ambahan usually teaches lessons about life and love. It is recited by parents to educate their children, by young people to express their love, by the old to impart their experiences, and by the community and its uh, tribal ceremonies. Now, using knives, uh, the ambahan is carved onto pieces of bamboo or the barks of trees. The Hanu Nuo Mangyan script is one of the first of the three forms of the ancient Babayan alphabet, which is the ancient Filipino alphabet um, that is still in use today. Some of the poems are haunting, and they have the clarity and depth of a haiku. Uh, one of them is a beautiful poem for us to be, uh, for us who are separated from our loved ones by distance. And it reads as, you, my friend, dearest of all, thinking of you makes me sad. Rivers deep are in between, forests vast keep us apart. But thinking of you with love, as if you are here nearby, standing, sitting at my side. And uh, yeah, so for more on this article, but I'd like to uh, all of viewers to um, check it out on, that's philstar.com, philstar global. Um, yes, the article is Poetry for Starters by the author Danton Ramoto. And I'd like to welcome everyone back to uh, speak of other forms of say, ethnic poetry that you're very much fond of, I'm myself uh, like haiku. So uh, 
Oh. I definitely love a good haiku too, but um, to bring it back to my Indian roots, uh, we have we have guzzles, which are song song poetry, right? And then we have something called shairis, which are basically our answer to William Shakespeare's sonnets. And uh, I'm generally not a love poem type of person because I don't know. I just don't. <laughs> I don't but if you're gonna call my eyes, like, tell me my eyes are as beautiful as roses as go most guzzles do, I mean, as most shairis do, I'm all about that. And I love those types of poetry. And um, a lot of it is inspired by Rumi and Hafiz. And um, it's it's gone since uh, then. And Rumi and Hafiz are my favorites. I, I love them. They're my favorite poets. And yeah, so that's my two cents on that. <laughs> on the flip side of our sense, uh, two cents on that, I consider myself a love poet, although I always say that I'm a love poet, but I'm the least romantic person I've ever met. Uh, and he, there's this uh, uh, Arabic form of poetry known as ghazal. And ghazal in Arabic translates to uh, romanticism, small r romantic uh, gestures in English. And it started in pre-Islamic uh, Arab nations as these poems that are made of couplets that rhyme and that are that can be easily uh, memorized and spoken. So it is such a beautiful form of poetry that derives from another form of poetry, which, which is known as the Qasida, which translates to poem, actually. So it is really interesting to see these uh, universal uh, forms that just started and now have evolved into what they are today it's really beautiful well it's it's so true isn't it and it's like these forms they do they do evolve and they do sometimes take on a life of their own that's a little bit different to the uh, original intention uh, not intention but like the original way they were used i mean i know i think haiku is another form where i believe originally people would essentially tell haiku to each other almost like they're sort of freestyling off each other kind of thing and you know it 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 never ceases to amaze me how many poetry forms there are and just how many more there are to discover I mean it's like it's like, it's like me personally I there's another Afghan form called Alande that I quite like and it's just two lines the first line's nine syllables the second line's 13 you've got a doduitsu which is five 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 seven kind of thing and it's just there are so many forms to to play with and have fun with and to read and they all bring their own they all bring their own energy to the poetry party and um you know now you know it's it's fantastic and it's like what was the name of that form against week sorry i got so carried away with it i forgot the, forgot the name of the form the form is called ambahan ambahan, ambahan. Mm. yes and again that is uh that is seven syllable metric lines and the poem can run for more than four lines usually mm. chanted Fantastic. And that's, you know, that that's now another another form to play with, which is fantastic. So yeah, this it's great. And I love by the way what you said about this the idea of a metaphor, like the real the the realization itself of the link between the, the two things or the two ideas which lead to enlightenment. I mean, we always think of metaphors, we always try to explain metaphors, but we never stop for that second to indulge in the realization itself you know we try when, whenever we get it when whenever we get the metaphor or whenever we see the link we immediately jump on uh, the metaphor and how it represents but we never stop at that second that that liminal moment mm -hmm. and think of the realization that led us to this enlightenment and i found that very very beautiful i took note of that just immediately as soon as you said it I mean, it, 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 exactly the same here, and it's it, it's so it's so true what you say, isn't it? It's a case of you know you if you have say like a, a big long written free form poem, it, it's great, but it's moving on. But yeah, you're 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 always moving on to the next thing, and sometimes in the moment it's hard to process it, and it's maybe on like yes. a fifth or sixth read you'll get something else from it, and these it feels like a really sort of contemplative form that really wants to make you stop and think and make connections and I, I i really like that yeah well thanks everyone it was a lovely conversation about different forms and yeah we still yeah, we all love poetry and um yes keep on loving poetry everyone thank you it's our show for this week martin eddie arsene nice to see you again um nice yeah so sing us out 
Absolutely. So we have loads of stuff going on here at PGN. You should uh, check out the Poets Reacts every week here on our YouTube channel. Um, check out us at the Poetry News. We have the Poets Lighthouse with the wonderful Finn Bell. We have uh, a new show on, I, I think it's TikTok, although like I said last week, I don't really understand TikTok, with, uh, with um, uh, Paul Conqueso and Poet Khan. We have random we have random going lives on Instagram. We have Bottoms Up, which is our regular poetry night, which is um, pretty much every Saturday. We have Haven as well, which is another event that we do. And you can connect with us in so many ways, which Eddie will now talk about. Yes, this plethora of events is all over, all over the place. And you can know more about it if you follow us on Instagram at the PGN official uh, Instagram page and on Facebook, the Poetry Global Network. Please tell us what you think about all the forms of poetry, about teaching poetry in uh, schools, everything uh, in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button and make sure that you get notified uh, whenever we post a video. And, and also, if you have anything to tell us, please send us an email at uh, the Poetry Global Network at gmail.com. That is all we have for you uh, today. Thank you for my fellow heralds, uh, Martin, Arson, and uh, Squigs. We will see you all next week. Bye. Take care, everyone. Yes. Take care. Bye.